What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Comically Boston. Today's episode 82, and we are talking about SAG AFTRA. They have finally gone on strike, as well as the writers, and they're joining their fellow writers in strike. So, that happened, um, and Deadpool 3 has officially shut down it's shooting and right before we got some more images because we all know there was tons of images coming out on set ryan reynolds blake lively and his two daughters visit the set and they visit mr deadpool wolverine <laughs> and uh i loved this picture here <laughs> hugh jackman's holding a little fan clearly dying in the heat in this full suit and they're in full sun but he's got like knives stabbed into him in his back and his in his front and the daughter's like keeping her distance she's like uh dad what's what's wrong with you and he's like don't worry honey this is wolvie this is my good buddy he's just got a few stabs he's he's gonna be all right <laughs> but we finally get to see him fighting with his claws in which is exciting stuff you know the the other pictures had no claws in meaning they're probably going to be cgi but hey gotta have some type of images with him with his claws in and that right there looks like old classic wolverine he's got his old classic yellow and blue suit like he just looks badass he looks great blocking a shot from deadpool there yeah you know the 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 knives if you will the claws will be cgi if i'm guessing but hey he's still getting a St still has him in and this last shot here was like the last shot i seen of deadpool and he's like clearly making full eye contact with the people that have been taking pictures and leaking them online and he's got his guns drawn he's had enough <laughs> like that shit really made me laugh and um this upcoming week is barbenheimer and we got mrs margot robbie herself she danced onto the red carpet in this beautiful red dress she is fucking gorgeous we haven't had a baddie of the week in a long time so the baddie of the week miss margot robbie thank you for that red freaking dress can't wait for barbie can't wait for oppenheimer maybe do a barbenheimer double feature we'll see um also just wanted to mention this real quick the adventures my adventures with superman on hbo max or on max now um this animated show with <laughs> a young Clark and a young Lois Lane, they're meeting at the Daily Bugle and falling in love, uh, and he's figuring out who he is as Superman, he doesn't really know all of his powers yet. Uh, I don't know if this is a direct prequel to Superman Legacy, and if they're related at all, but I would like to think that this is going to be David Cornswet and uh, Rachel Brosnahan's Lois and Clark in his movie, because his he's supposed to already be at the Bugle, he's supposed to already have his powers, he's supposed to already be a super world with other superheroes going on in it. Regardless, I trust in James Gunn, but a lot of people were hating on this animated show. I watched the first couple episodes, and maybe I'm just a sucker for a love story, but I thought it was pretty freaking good, you know? Um, but go check out that for yourself, comment below, let me know what you think. Uh, also this week we have Secret Invasion episode 5 coming out. Last week we got this stinger between uh, between Priscilla Fury and Nick Fury. Priscilla goes, would you have loved me if I never changed, if I had been my true self? And Nick Fury walks away, we think he's not going to respond at all. And then all of a sudden he turns and just goes, I guess we'll never know. Oof, that hurt, because like, you know, it, it's double meaning, because he's saying, you know, you know, we just didn't shoot each other so you know obviously they have love for each other but she lied to him and stuff like that and i'm sure he's probably lied to her so i'm i'm hoping their relationship ends up uh they end up back together and being fine but she's more or less asking um would you have loved me if i never changed into a scroll and if i was still this green version and you know Maybe he would have, but maybe he wouldn't have. So I guess we'll never know because she changed into this Dr. Priscilla Fury. And um, now that's who she is. And she's like, and it's funny because all these scrolls keep going, oh, I'd like to be at home in my own skin. But they keep turning back into the humans that they're impersonating. They're not like walking around in scroll form the whole time. So it's, I find it kind of funny, but. I'm so excited for this show. We got so many questions about that show, you know. 
and we've seen now Extremis healing them. We've seen Gravik with the Groot arm. And on the rest of that screen, we saw Cull Obsidian in the Frost Beast. So w will we see those powers in the scroll Super Scrolls? Maybe. I don't know. Uh, that's one of my questions. Is Talos, after that last episode, really dead? Um, where did Gaia take off to? You know, Gaia wasn't there when Talos died, but she's in the trailer. She was holding somebody on the ground that we now know is Talos. So next episode, I think Gaia's going to run up and be like, oh my god, dad, you're dead. But like, Talos, Ben Mendelsohn was one of my favorite characters. He had the best voice, definitely. Oh, you know that Australian. He really had such a great, deep voice. And, oh man, I hope he's not dead. I really do. Because... Talos is definitely one of my favorites and you know it feels like just didn't feel quite right and quite impactful enough the way he died it kind of just felt like bad you know like uh, man they're just killing everybody uh, Talos uh, Ross Maria Hill the Gaia for a quick second she got back uh, thankfully but well we knew they weren't gonna bring in Amelia Clark and just kill her like that so She's too high level. She's the you know the mother of dragons, the queen herself. So we're not just gonna kill her off. That would be so disrespectful. But this scroll Rava, who the hell is that? I thought you know maybe this could be some misdirection, and maybe the lady scroll that is impersonating Rhodey is gonna end up being um, Soren. You know because she died off screen, and I'm what I'm still curious about that. What's the deal with that? Like. There's a lot of questions going on, and they got two more episodes, and I really hope this show sticks the landing, um, and I really hope more people watch it, because Secret Invasion has been such a good show, but it seems like a lot of people have been uh, not really watching it, because they don't know about it, or they're just middle of the summer, and they're busy, I don't know, but... I've been thoroughly enjoying this show, and I've also been thoroughly enjoying a Marvel rewatch, which I'll be talking all of those movies in further detail in their own separate movie reviews, and recently I have done The Last Stand, X-Men 3, 2006, uh, The Silver Surfer, Fantastic Four movie from 2007, Ghost Rider from 2007, The Incredible Hulk with Edward Norton from 2008, X-Men Origins, Wolverine, that cherished cherished movie um that little cherub there from 2009 and then now i've moved on to x-men first class with michael fassbender and james mcavoy from 2011 so i've been making some progress and if you're wondering why i've skipped iron man one and uh you know all of the 2008 all those movies because i already started a marvel rewatch recently and i had done Captain Marvel, and I had done the timeline order, but I said, no, nah, I gotta go back and watch all this Fox stuff, too, because of all this Deadpool news and all the stuff coming out, I really gotta watch all of the Marvel projects, all the X-Men's, everything that's possibly come out, and I still have to do Blades, I still have to do The Punisher from 2004, I still have to do Elektra, those movies are just not streaming anywhere right now, so maybe I'll rent those one day, but that will probably be, like, maybe this next weekend coming up. But I might be busy, because Oppenheimer and Barbie came out. So, you know, Marvel rewatch continuing. But also, a huge movie that came out. Mission Impossible, Dead Reckoning Part 1. Oof, such a mouthful of a title. But hey, it was a 2 hour and 43 minute movie. And I'll tell you what, it was a little long for, you know, that's a little long of a movie. 2 hours and 43 minutes. By the end, I really had to piss my pants. But... I'll tell you what, I stayed in the theater the whole time, and it really, it flies by, and it's really entertaining. At certain points, you're really glued in. You're like, oh my god, are they about to die? Like, because, you know, we all seen the trailer with uh, Tom Cruise riding the motorcycle off the cliff. So we've seen the stunt, you know, from every angle, every possible way, a hundred times. But what we didn't see was how the stunt was incorporated into the movie. What I love about Tom Cruise is it's not Fast and the Furious. They're not just doing stunts. And now at Fast and Furious, they're just doing stunts in CGI. Like, it's, it's poor. But <laughs> Tom Cruise does stunts not just for the sake of the stunt, you know, not just because he what he wanted to do. In the movie, he's doing the stunt because it's the only way to possibly get where he needs to go to achieve his goal, which is the impossible mission, which is getting this key back, you know, and then, uh, you know, it's a very satisfying movie, right? Like, you get all the way to the end, and you still feel like you just watched a complete movie, while also 
completely setting up the next movie in this is very much so part one. Um, but I gave it four and a half out of five stars. I think I initially gave it four stars and I had to go back and give four and a half like because I kept thinking about it all weekend. I was like, wow, this movie really is something. And the cast is great. Uh, Rotten Tomatoes, it's up in the high 90s. Uh, cinema score of an A. It's just, it, it was all over the place, but it, it was awesome. Like, you know, Tommy Cruise hunting down this key. Uh, Haley uh, Atwell is by far my favorite character in this movie. She is fantastic in this. She's like a pit pocket, like, and she's doing action. She's in the car, you know, in a little Fiat, ripping around. Um, at one point, Tommy Cruise is, jumps on a motorcycle, and he's, like, chasing after her in this Policia motorcycle. And she's in this, like, I want to say Beamer or something. And she's, like, fully just smashing into everything. And I'm like, I don't know if this was planned or if this is just Haley Atwell hitting things or if, like, it was actually her in the car hitting shit. But they kept cutting back to her face, and you'd see her, like, getting jarred around and shit. So I was, like, the whole time I'm like... Damn, is Haley Atwell really driving this shit? Because, you know, Tom Cruise is is the guy, you know? He'll he'll go and do all the stunts if he possibly can. He's going to do it, you know? like, And at certain points, it, it's like, it, it's just great. There's certain car chases, there's certain uh, shootouts, there's just great moments everywhere. But a stellar cast, you get this guy here from... Uh, I don't remember his name, but he's a legendary actor, and, you know, he was the cop in Fast and the Furious that Brian O'Connor punches in the face, like, that's where I really know him the most from, but he's also, uh, for some reason, it's popping in my head, Kong Skull Island, <laughs> he, like, goes to go kill Kong, he's, like, holding grenades, or no, he's going to kill one of those lizard things, the, like, creepy skull-headed lizard thing that's coming after him, and he's going to blow it up with grenades, he's holding the grenades, and he's, like, about to have this great death and kill this thing, and the thing tail whips him, and he just blows up onto the side of a mountain, and it's like, ah! Oh, God, that one scene, I don't know why it flashed into my head, maybe just looking at his face, but Palm Clemente was in this movie. She's great. Vanessa Kirby's in this movie, again, returning as the White Widow from the last movie, which I absolutely love about these movies, is that they take things from the last movie that still was great, and they take, you know... I think they like bring the pieces that work, you know, Simon Pegg, th this, um, Luther, the black dude, like they've been together since 2000, you know, all these years later, they're still making these Mission Impossible movies. I love that. I love to see characters that you like return, you know, um, Jeremy Renner wasn't in this movie. I think they were shooting this at the same time as like Endgame and Tom Cruise has been holding on to this one <laughs> since after the pandemic, like he's a smart man, but he makes he makes a killer movie, you know, and uh, I think it wouldn't be two hours and 43 minutes if it didn't have to be, and, you know, they just take you on a ride, they're action-adventure movies, and they just tell great freaking stories, and they're not doing it for no reason, and they just mix in the action right into the story, like, wow, like, I, tops, hats off to you, Mr. Cruz and Mr. McQuay, um, I, I thoroughly love the movie, and I cannot wait till next movie to next i don't know i have no idea when it's coming out probably 2025 2026 when part two comes out who knows what tom cruise going to space what what will be his next stunt? comment below uh are you a tom cruise fan i know some people cannot stand the man but hey separate the art from the artist his work you know, the Mission Impossible, I didn't think I was going to be as big a fan as I am. Now that I've rewatched all the Mission Impossibles to get to this point, the Mission Impossible movies are solid freaking movies. Go check them out for yourself and let me know what you think in the comment section below. Upcoming this week, we have movie reviews coming out. We have another episode of Secret Invasion. We'll be breaking down on Thursday and over the weekend, I will be checking out Oppenheimer and Barbie. Will you be going to see it? Will you be doing a Barbenheimer double feature? I don't know if I got five hours of movie in me <laughs> over this, you know, one sitting. I think I might have to do like a Friday night Oppenheimer, let that blow my mind, and then maybe Saturday or Sunday go and see Barbie. Have like a little uh, lighter of a weekend, if you will, because I know Oppenheimer's probably going to fuck me up. <laughs> I'm going to be sitting there like, whoa, my whole brain's going to be blown. Um, but hey. I'm Big Cam. Thank you guys for watching. My links will be down in the description below. Go check me out on Letterboxd or Twitter or Threads and 
at Big Cam everywhere, two G's in the big, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you guys for coming. I love you all, and comment any questions you got, any concerns, any uh, ideas, thoughts you're having. I would love to hear from you, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.